So that is all I wanted to do in this course. Now if you revise the thing, if you recall the things how we started, it was it was started from a very modest observation and that was the speed of light is same in all inertial frames. The experiments, Michelson Morley experiments supported this and then uh, theory Maxwell's equations, the theory that also tells that speed of light is an absolute constant irrespective of which frame you are doing. If you are Gauss law, if you are batch savart law, if you are Faraday's law, if electricity and magnetism laws, they are working well in a frame, then the speed of light is c equal to square root of 1 by mu naught epsilon naught, which is a fixed constant. It does not have reference to which frame you are talking from. And then uh, the puzzle was that uh, if I am changing the frame and the new frame is moving with respect to the old frame and I am measuring the velocity of same object in these two frames, how come these two can be equal. So, starting from that small piece of electromagnetic theory and the experiments, this uh, puzzle came up that uh, the velocity transformation from one frame to other frame is not governed by Galilean transformations and therefore, respecting the principle of relativity, respecting that in this uh, universe you do not have a special frame which you call inertial frame, anything all inertial frames any if you have one frame which is inertial, then all frames moving with constant velocity with respect to this frame are also inertial and you cannot, you cannot pick up one and say this is this has some special thing and the Maxwell's equation must be correct in this. The speed of light should be c in this, you cannot. So, respecting that uh, principle of relativity, we change the Galilean transformation. The Galilean transformation was changed to be compatible with this fact, this piece of information from electromagnetic theory that uh, speed of light is a fixed universal constant square root of 1 by mu naught epsilon naught and see how many things came out from that. The Lorentz transformation came out, Galilean transformation was replaced by Lorentz transformation and then we saw that. Uh, Okay, the Newton's laws uh, were okay with Galilean transformation. Galilean transformations say that if Newton's law are valid in one inertial frame, they are also valid in all other inertial frames. So, the principle of relativity works very well with Newton's law and Galilean transformation. Now, Galilean transformation is replaced by Lorentz transformation and Newton's laws are not compatible with this new transformation. So, once again the problem, different inertial frames will give you different experimental results which are governed by Newton's laws. And then we realize that no, 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 experiments do show that Newton's laws themselves are faulty at high speeds. If the speed of the particles are high, high means close to that speed of light in vacuum, close means 10 percent of that, 5 percent of that, 20 percent of that. There are very significant deviations, the experiments show results which are not consistent with the Newton's laws. So, Newton's laws themselves are to be changed. Then we talked of relativistic dynamics, redefined linear momentum, redefined energy and from that the concept of rest mass energy and uh, total energy uh, came in. So, so many things are coming out of, of this and uh, after all that dynamics and all those things in this course, we went back to electricity and magnetism because it all originated from electricity and magnetism. And we asked how the electric field and magnetic field transform when we go from one frame to another frame which is moving with respect to the first frame. So, using Lorentz transformations and Maxwell's laws, 
we could obtain the transformation equations of E field and B field and we found that electric field and magnetic field are not two separate entities. They are not two separate entities, they are part of one quantity which we called electromagnetic field. Once you fix a frame, yes, this quantity gives you electric field and magnetic field, but you change the frame and it is not the electric field is transforming to electric field there and magnetic field is transforming to magnetic field there, it all getting mixed up. So, you do not have separate physical quantities, it is separate only when you are in a frame just like a vector. If you decide a frame then you talk of components, this is x component and that is y component, but the vector is something different, you change the frame and the components will change, but the vector will not change. So, this electromagnetic field is the physical quantity and electric field and magnetic field are just uh, their parts once you fix up the frame. So, that uh, new concept came in and then we talked of four vectors, four vectors not only that uh, x and t for which the Lorentz transformation was initially derived set of many more things like energy momentum uh, like that. So they transform according to the same Lorentz transformation, same matrix and electric field and magnetic field they transform at second rank tensor. So, so many things one after one, one after one, one after another the sequence uh, kept uh, unfolding and newer and newer things uh, came out and finally, we talked about this Minkowski's diagram where all these algebraic equations can be represented by these uh, geometrical constructions. They, the um, axis, uh, parallelograms and uh, rectangles and slopes and straight lines uh, all that. So, it is a really really exciting story you know, where we start and where we reach and how many in, in, in the journey how many new adventures we have taken it is a really really very exciting topic and very interesting topic and I hope I have uh, been able to kept that excitement alive ok. So, thank you very much and uh, all the best enjoy physics enjoy learning and be very good teachers.